top five healthy foods that aren't really healthy. I'm gonna tell you, and I'm guessing you're probably gonna be pretty darn shocked and maybe a little annoyed. Tune in to learn more. Hey guys, welcome back. Guess what we're talking about today? We're talking about the top five foods that you think are healthy, but really aren't, and are probably worse for you than you, than you think they are, like really worse for you. Now, before I get into this, I do wanna give you two kind of caveats. So number one, I wanna tell you that I'm, I'm coming at this with my POV is, is skewed towards my keto life, okay? So I'm coming at this with a perspective of looking at things from foods and how they create an insulin response, um, foods, how they affect your blood sugar. Um, that said, that still is something, generally speaking, that should be taken into consideration by everybody. So um, while I will say this, keto has obviously done wonders for me. Um, most of you know I've lost 36 inches. You're probably tired of hearing this, but I do say it for people that might stumble upon one of my videos and, and they don't know it. I've lost 36 inches and 30 pounds going keto, and this is after not having been able to lose weight no matter what I tried and being you know, in a caloric deficit and working out six days a week, sometimes two times a day. So, so all of that was happening and I couldn't lose weight. And then I go keto at the nudging of my functional medicine doctor and I was able to easily lose about a pound to a pound and a quarter, sometimes a pound and a half a week and lose again, 36 inches and 30 pounds off of my five foot five frame at age 52. I'm now 53. Um, it's been remarkable. It's been easy. It's definitely been a lifestyle. Um, so I do not believe, you know, that the whole world has to go keto. Keto definitely is a commitment. It's a commitment to say, you know, so not only am I keto, I'm keto plus gluten-free. So, you know, not everybody that goes keto, um, has to, to do all the things that I've had to do. Like I'm keto and gluten-free and I've also had to cut out corn. So, but that's because I have a, um, uh, a very a highly, I'm highly reactive to corn. I took a food sensitivity test through a great organization called MRT. It's called an MRT leap test. I'll link it down below. In fact, let me leave myself a note. Sometimes if I don't write this down, I will forget to link it up. Oxford, it's through Oxford Labs. Um, and, and you take this blood test, it's about 300 to $350. It's life-changing. My husband took one as well. Um, and uh, it, it, the reason that I took it is for years and years and years, no doctors could figure out why I was getting these skin bumps all over my arms, my chest, my neck, my back sometimes on my face, they were painful, rock hard bumps. Uh, they were not acne, but yet I had been to doctors, dermatologists, uh, hormone specialists, no one could figure out. And I was put on all sorts of damaging medication. And finally, when I took this um, blood test, it comes back and it tells you what you are reactive to. It is not a food allergy test. It's not like that allergy test where they, they put the shots in your back and they see what you're allergic to. This is what you are reactive to. What it turned out for me was I'm highly reactive to corn. Corn, which is in like everything. Um, there is corn syrup in just about every liquid on the planet. <laughs> There is a uh, corn, why am I going blank on that corn powder? Um, corn, I'm going blank on the corn powder that's in so many things. Um, anyway, I'll think of it later. But uh, I, when I cut out corn, the bumps went away and I do not get them anymore. And it has been life-changing. My husband, then a year and a half, so I, I had that test in 2020, so almost two years ago, my husband, was starting to get um, really bad rash and bumps all over his back. 
and it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And I was getting to the point where I was putting hydrocortisone all over his back every single night. And so I'm like, I really suggest we do this Oxford test for you, this MRT test. He did it and his test came back weird in my opinion, because the thing, there were two things that he tested um, highly reactive to. Um, and there was one was like polysorbate 90. And we were like, what, you know, we're looking for like the pan, like this, the major thing that we could get him to stop eating. And it was that and some other obscure thing that he never eats. And we were just stumped. So what we ended up doing is cutting out all of his things. It shows you red alert, what you're highly reactive to. And then it shows you yellow alert, what you're moderately reactive to. And then it shows you like kind of like green, what you're not reactive to at all. So in this case, we wrote to them and they said, in that case, if you don't think that you're consuming these things that you're highly reactive to, just cut out all of the yellows and see, see what that does. And for him, these were um, soy, um, uh, I'm trying to think, it was a lot of the fruit he was having on a regular basis. Um, soy, I think some onion and garlic, I, I, I don't know. Um, it, was, it was just a lot, it was quite a lot of things that he was having on a regular basis. He cut those out. Let me just tell you, his entire back went from being like sandpaper um, and full of bumps and redness to it is like a baby. It is like smooth. It is amazing what can happen when you cut out but the foods. That was a sidebar I didn't intend to talk about, but it is, I do, I do feel very strongly that that is, um, if that's appropriate for any of you, I do want to mention that. Um, so if you're interested, I can connect you with my contact there and get you so that you can order one of those tests for yourself. But again, back to what I was saying about keto, um, it is a commitment to go keto. And, I, and the way that I've gone keto with A, not being able to do corn. So the reason I bring up corn is think of going, you know, making something Mexican. I can't have corn tortillas. I can't have flour tortillas. A lot of people that go keto can get these great low carb tortillas that are flour tortillas, or they can have corn tortillas. I can't even do that. Okay. But they have these great egg life tortillas. So I've made my life different with those. So not everybody who wants to lose weight has to go keto. I absolutely recognize that. So I am by no means suggesting when I'm making this video that everybody in the world needs to go keto and cut out all of these foods. I, I always want to preface that. I am particularly in my life right now, very passionate about serving women who are age 40 plus, who are dealing with hormonal issues, um, who are experiencing the frustrations that I was. They are unable to lose weight. They are working out. They're trying to get their bodies in shape and they are unable to get their body to respond the way that I did. Those are the people that I'm trying to help. So I will always call attention and say, you know, hey, <laughs> if you don't have to go keto, I get you. People, let me be honest with you. If I didn't, if I didn't have to, this is probably why I waited so long, you know? I'd heard of keto. I hadn't heard that it was, I hadn't heard the things that I am now telling you. If I had heard the things that I'm now telling you, I would have gone keto earlier. I had never heard that it was as appropriate for women um, in hormones. I'd never heard that it was great for insulin resistance. I'd not heard all that kind of stuff. <sighs> um, so um, just want to say that as a sidebar, but what I'm talking about today are things that I've reflected on and, and things that I see popping up just on social and, and, and also just things that when I reflect on a lot of the things that I used to eat or just when I happen to go out to a restaurant or a coffee shop and I look and I'm like, wow, I used to eat that stuff all the time. And, and now I, I look at it differently. Um, and I'm like, oh, man, 
Like no wonder, no wonder I had such a problem losing weight. So I just want you to know as you watch this video and you hear me talk about this, I'm not trying to ruin your life. I'm just trying to bring your attention to some of these things. If you are somebody who is not in this phase of life where you're 40 plus, your hormones are kind of jacked, your body is working normally, this is more of like, hey, just be aware of some of this stuff. If you're a woman age 40 plus and you're in that, that wait, did I say that right? If you're not in the phase of life where your hormones are jacked, you're age 40 plus, just be aware. If you are in the phase of life where you're age 40 plus, you suspect that your hormones are jacked, this is where you really want to start paying attention to these kinds of foods. L look at what you're eating because if you're eating this kind of stuff and you're having difficulty and maybe you're somebody who you're spending all of your time as a runner and all you're doing is cardio and you've never been to get your, you've never been to see a functional medicine doctor and get your blood work done and have someone look at your hormones. Like this is big picture, a red alert for you to go, I need to make an appointment with Kelly Alexa, have a consult and figure out what my next game step is, game plan is because I am a hot mess and I need to get off this bad train because I'm going in the wrong direction and I'll help you. Okay. Um, so Top five foods that you think are healthy that are really not healthy. Number one, and this is probably one of the worst offenders of all, cereal. And it's funny because I'm not gonna mention his name, but I'm sure you could find him if you know who I'm talking of. Um, this, this is kind of a relatively famous influencer person who had a very inspiring weight loss story like, I don't know, eight or nine years ago. Um, and who has since this, so this person had a very inspiring weight loss story, maybe even 10 years ago. It's a, it's a, it's a man, lost a lot of weight, very inspiring story, became somewhat of an influencer. Um, he was kind of in my, my fitfluential world as an ambassador. Um, and then I lost track with him. I lost touch with him, whatever. And you know, he moved on. Um, I hadn't seen him in ages. And then he popped up on my TikTok or my Instagram. And he has since not only gained all the weight back, but like another hundred pounds. And he even said in this video, he's like, I'm the heaviest I've ever been. And in one of his videos, and he's basically saying, I'm on the journey to lose the you know, weight just like I, I lost it before. And in one of these videos, you know what he said? He said, my biggest problem is cereal. He said, if you put a box of cereal in front of me, I cannot control myself. I will eat the entire box of cereal. And it made me think um, just about cereal in general. Like number one, I mean, I, I think so many different cereals are amazing. Whether it's back in the day, Captain Crunch or Life Cereal or whatever. I mean, there's almost not any cereal. Like I could walk down the cereal aisle and you just give me any cereal with some almond milk and amazing. But here's the thing, serving sizes is a joke. Like the average serving size they say for cereal is like two thirds of a cup. Do you wanna know what two thirds of a cup is? It's like this much. Nobody has this much cereal. People make a bowl of cereal is like a bowl. And the serving size is typically a cup. So there's problem number one is the serving size. Problem number two is people will sometimes have, because it's all carbs, you're gonna put that in with milk and you're just never gonna be full. I mean, I, one thing that I know after going keto, I have learned what happens when you become fat adapted. You get full so much faster. I never, I used to be that girl whose appetite knew no bounds. And I sometimes shock myself because Steve and I will be out to dinner and, and I'll get through like, he and I'll split a steak and then some side dishes. And sometimes he'll give me, you know, this much of a steak because that's all I ask for. But I'll have a little bit of the steak, I'll have a few bites of this. And I am not trying to be that girl, you know, who's like, oh, I'll just have a few bites of this and a few bites of that. Like, I'm just not that girl. I'm not that girl. I like to eat. 
So I'm sitting there and I'm eating what I want, but I will get to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I've hit my threshold. And Steve will look at me and go, dude, you've hardly eaten anything. He probably wouldn't say dude, but you know, he'll say, you've hardly eaten anything. And I'm like, I, I'm just full. Like that's what happens when you're eating like a real big ass piece of steak. I mean, like, like real steak. And then I'm having a potato with butter and bacon and cheese and sour cream on it. And every bite has that on it. Real butter, sour cream, bacon. Cheese. So every bite is like fat and whatever. And then I'm having broccoli and I'm having a dirty martini. Like every bite of whatever I have is filling. When you're eating carbs, it's like eating air. You're just never full and you're never satisfied. And so you can just keep eating and keep eating and keep eating. Now I understand why when I used to cheat um, <laughs> on so many things, why do you think I used to be able to go after a leg workout with my trainer and I would go to the HEB on the way home and I would buy a dozen donuts, I'm not lying, and I would eat eight of them on the way home. Why do you think I could eat eight donuts on the way home? And, some, and for any of you that are gonna comment and go, oh my God, I can't believe you can eat eight donuts. I could only eat one, it's so sweet. Oh, whatever, you know, I can eat eight donuts. I could eat probably 12 and it would be okay back in the day. Now I probably, it probably would make me sick um, because I, I probably would throw up from the amount of sugar. But back then, no. But I'm just saying, it's like, air. There's nothing in a donut that is going to fill you up. The only thing that would happen to me is I would kind of get that, you know, that kind of like a slight gag reflex of like, okay, I've hit the sugar threshold. Like I need some water. I need a chaser or something. Um, there's just nothing with carbs that are going to fill you up. And so with cereal, it's just like, you're just eating flour, a bunch, a product that's made with like flour, and some chemicals and then you're putting it in a bowl with some milk and of course you're just consuming a bunch of calories you could easily have a meal that is 1500 calories and you'll be hungry in two hours so that's the problem with cereal among other things product number two smoothies and shakes and this is particularly true if you get it out at like a health bar or a smoothie bar or a shake bar you know like what's it called, Jamba Juice or whatever, which can also, my next one is juices. So these, kind, these two can kind of be combined in a way, but it's one thing if you make yourself a smoothie and you know what you're putting in it and you make it really clean and you don't put anything, like you don't put sweet stuff in it, but most people who are ordering something out at a place like a restaurant or a, uh, a Starbucks or a juice bar or a protein bar, or, you know, you know, the kind of places I'm talking about. I don't go to them. So I, I don't know how to call them the right thing. Um, but I just remember in the day, like there'd be like a, a health and fitness place and you could go and be like, Oh great. I can get like a protein shake and add all these extra things to it. And then you'd go and be like, Oh yeah, I want to have, you know, this with strawberry and banana and then protein and I can add, you know, extra wheatgrass to it and this and that. And you're not paying attention, but like, I know better now. If you add a scoop of protein and then you're adding banana and then you're adding strawberry and then you're adding milk and they're doing coconut and then they're adding your flavors and then you're adding this. First of all, it's easy, easily gonna get up to like six, seven, 800 calories. They're probably, you know, if they're doing coconut milk or almond milk, you're easily going to be having something that's going to have carbs, sugar. There, if you're doing strawberries, bananas, pineapple, you know, acai, any types of things that are smoothies with, that, that, that are using fruits, that's a sugary, insulin producing response type of a thing. All of these things, very high calorie, very insulin producing thing, raising your blood sugar, um, a lot higher sugary thing situation than you realize. And again, juice, same thing. People think that when they go to a healthy juice bar, like juice, let's, let's do juicing for a week. Juicing is still it's just, it, juicing is still 
carbing, it's still sugar, it's still seen by your body, especially because unless you're doing a juice that is like celery juice with no added anything, if you're going in there and you're doing apple juice with like anything that's sweet, just, just do this some Googling. You will see how many carbs are in there and, and the effect that it's gonna have on your blood sugar. Trust me. Um, so these things are not as healthy as you think. Just because it has the word detox on it doesn't mean it's healthy for you. Doesn't mean it isn't gonna raise your blood sugar. Doesn't mean it isn't gonna create an insulin response. <sighs> number five, or number four, excuse me, um, bars protein bars, um, energy bars. I mean, basically this is a calorie wrapped up in cellophane, a bunch of calories wrapped up in cellophane with a lot of sugar and an insulin response. I don't know how else to put it. And, and a bunch of chemicals that are not good for you, that are going to cause you to bloat and probably have a, an energy crash after, after you're done. That's all I have to say about that. Um, and I used to live on protein bars and energy bars. I mean, I, I lived for, for protein bars and, and all different flavors. And I remember this used to be my thing in the afternoon. I used to, you probably used to watch me here. I probably created videos about this. I remember back in the day, it was Kashi. And I would, I would heat them up in the microwave. And because it would get all melty. And then I'd be like, oh, this is like dessert. The reason it's like dessert is because it is dessert, because it's chocolate and sugar and granola. And I, that's why I liked it. Speaking of which, number five, brrr, granola. <laughs> so granola can also be a bar or it could be a cereal or it could be a topping for a bowl or a cereal or a smoothie. It can fall into multiple categories, but it is the most like people think it is like this healthy thing, but it's truly one of the most. And it used to be one of my most favorite indulgences ever. Um, it is one of the most highly dense caloric foods on the planet. Um, even if you get paleo granola, it is still highly calorically dense. It's just, it's sad. It's just very, um, it's, a, there's just almost no way unless you're doing, uh, like some of the, I think I've seen some like paleo granolas that are like just nuts and, and, but even then, you know, you get to the point where they make it and you have to have such a small portion Otherwise, you go way overboard with your calories and then it's depressing. So um, it's, I think it's just easier to just, if, if you, if you want to have something like that to, you know, I mean, the truth is it's better in my opinion and in my experience, if you want something sweet, have a real dessert and have it for dessert. Don't try to sneak something in and have less in between meals. I don't snack anymore. I just don't. I mean, I, I can't say I never snack. There are a few occasions that I will let myself have a bit of that, a bit of that. It's usually when I haven't had enough for lunch and that's my damn fault. But if I do the right thing and I'm having my exogenous ketones at 11 and two, and I have the right amount of lunch with fat in it, um, meaning the right size of lunch. I, I don't, it, it's just like, if I eat enough for lunch, um, I just don't need to snack. When I first started keto, I was doing way too much snacking. In fact, I would almost say I was doing, I would have my ketones and then I would have a snack and then I'd have ketones and more snack and then I'd get to dinner and I'd be super hungry. I, I know better now. So I'm lastly gonna close up and share bonus. And these are all, these all have to do with drinks. So these are bonuses to the top five foods that you think are healthy that are not. So these are just like, stay out of the bad lane and just keep your radar up when you're getting teas. And, and when I say this by teas, I don't mean like hot tea, like I'm drinking here with my green tea, which speaking of which, I need to have some more ketones.
You're probably like, how did that just happen? She held up green tea and said, I need to drink more ketones. Here's my tea. Um, when I'm, when I'm talking about tea here, I was thinking of all of these tea shops that are popping up all over with like the bubble tea and all the like tea drinks. Oh my God. That's like a calorie, uh, nightmare. Those are just screaming like 5,000 calories. So I'm, those are the types of tea shops I'm talking about. Tea shops, coffee shops, we're talking about Starbucks, etc. Um, and the other thing that might surprise you, that surprised me when I first went keto, the sugar-free skinny drinks at most restaurants that are made with agave syrup, if you look up agave syrup, um, that has a lot of carbs in it. Now, again, for those of you, my growing my bangs out, for those of you that um, are not keto, you might just look at the calories and be like, well, it doesn't bother me. I'm not watching my carbs. I get it. But again, I just want you to take a step back and understand that the purpose of my video is for you to understand that um, these things, when you're, when you're taking in a lot of carbs and, and, and sugar, things that will produce an insulin response in your body, that's no bueno. So the more that you can limit foods that are gonna create an insulin response, um, the better for you. And, and maybe some of you don't need to lose weight at all, you don't have a challenge, then you know what? By all means, don't worry about that agave syrup. For those of you that have a challenge and, and that fall into the category that I talked about, these are things that you wanna watch out for. So, I hope this was helpful for you. I would love to hear what your, what your comments are, which, which are, which are some of these things that I mentioned in today's videos are problem areas for you? Which one of these things surprised you? Um, are there any areas that I didn't mention today that you think are healthy foods that people think that are healthy foods that people don't realize aren't really healthy that I should include and in maybe my, you know, that I should, you know, add to maybe my next video, uh, next video list. So let me know. Um, and make sure that you guys, while you are here, um, are subscribed. I would love to hear, you know, your thoughts on this video, you, what you would love to see me talk about in future videos. We've got a lot coming up. Uh, I am so glad to be back. I'm having so much fun, um, being back on YouTube and we've got a lot planned. So again, love to hear from you. Love to hear your comments and your questions. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure that you hit your notification button and as well, make sure you hop on over to kellyalexa.com and that you're subscribed over there because we've got some good stuff coming up on uh, the blog as well. Thanks guys. We'll see you soon on the Kelly O show. And remember you're only one change away from an exceptionally better tomorrow. See you soon.